Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the new NECA toys, the ultimate alien hunter. This is the Stalker Predator. Predator has all new additional articulation with a removable mask, three spears, and he glows in the dark. This is a continued look at the more Kenner-inspired uh, Predators from the new NECA Predator line. It's recommended for ages 17 and up. The back of the package. The other characters, other Predators available are Ghost Predator, Stalker Predator, and Spiked Tail Predator. Descending from the Night Hunter clan near the southern pole of Yuja Prime, Stalker lives in a world of complete darkness. Having developed unparalleled night vision technology, the members of Stalker's clan hunt in coordinated packs over large open areas. Their translucent skin is an environmental adaptation uh, which allows the phosphorescent green blood to shine through and that glow acts as a location signal in the absence of light. Pack hunting offers a great advantage for while most creatures in this area are blind, their prey is also much larger than them and thus extremely dangerous to take down alone. Stalker and his clan are very removed from the rest of the planet and thus hunt more for survival than for sport. The Night Hunter clan is one of the few Predator clans that does not possess cloaking technology, as it is no use in this environment. To check out more from the folks over at NECA Toys, head over to www.necaonline.com. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're going to get a better look at the Stalker Predator from the NECA Predator line. Here's more heading away, guys. Don't go anywhere. All right, so now that we've got the Stalker Predator out of packaging, uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll look at the accessories first, then we'll have a look at the Predator himself. Uh, for starters, he comes with three spears, although two of the three spears are not uh, extended. Uh, you can see, though, that they are mirror copies to one another. With some really great sculpting also in the handle portion. Hopefully the camera is doing that true justice. What I can only describe as almost like a copper slash kind of burnt copper brown uh, is what's adorning most of the, the blades from the spears and also his armor. It's a beautiful color. I, I love the color on him and can't wait to, I'll show you guys more of that in a second. But he comes with, like I said, three. One is a fully extended spear. The other two are just, uh, you know, uh, not not extended, they're just the original uh, uh, closed off spears. He comes with two, uh, three of those in total. He comes with a, uh, what I could not figure out where this went on Predator, uh, then I found out later. It's just like a little holder, which I guess you could take one of the spears and it can kind of sit in the holder and you're thinking to yourself, well still, I, where does this go? It actually goes at the side of his leg. I was actually thinking initially it was uh, one of his uh, cannons. I'm looking all over the place at the top there and then sure enough that peg is right at the bottom here. So we just line it up and peg it into place just like that. And I got this little piece of plastic that's loose from it. I kind of might get some glue and just kind of close that shut. But uh, you know you could take a spear and just kind of sit it in there. I, I don't really know what other purpose it, it serves, as I don't think there was any other weapons in the packaging. I'll have to double check that afterwards. Uh, what you can, however, do with the extra spears is if you move his hair, and there's a lot of it, you move his hair out of the way, he has a couple of little, uh, I don't know if you can see it, little clamps, and you can take these spears. A couple of these you might actually have to bend to get them in there but this section houses the additional spears. Very less uh, weaponized this Predator is and more relying on like traditional handheld weapons. So I guess he would hold the one spear and then he's got extras that he can pull out and use during uh, his hunts. It, it, it looks good. I mean, having the additional on him, it just looks like you know he would be prepared uh, as opposed to just having him carrying the one. Uh, then he's got an additional hand. It's a it's a strange hand as it's only just a flat palm. I can't 
I can't deduce why you would need a flat palm to come in clue with a predator. Maybe I'm overlooking something. I mean, it can simply just plug into his hand. Um, in fact, let's let's do it right now so I can show you. Just pull the hand out of the socket, plug the new hand in. But as you can see, or you can't see yet because I haven't done it, but as you can see, uh, plugging it in his socket, there we go. Plugging it into his socket, he just has a flat palm. I don't know why he would necessarily come with a flat palm. It just doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, the default for me would be the default that came out of packaging, and I would just leave it to the devices of having his open hands be the fall to hands for display purposes. There we go. Then, of course, the other thing he comes with as well is that a lot of the Predators have now removable masks, at least the Kenner ones. And the removable mask on him is awesome. Incorporating that, that it's almost like a copper penny, if I could describe it. Uh, unfortunately, in Canada here, we don't have pennies anymore. We're, we're rounding up. We're a country of rounding up. We don't have pennies anymore. But if we had old pennies, sometimes like an old cookie jar of pennies, if you went to your grandparents' house or something, they have a jar of pennies. It kind of looks like his armor has been made out of old pennies. Uh, you can take, though, the, you know what, let's get a close look at the helmet first, or the mask, and then we'll put that over top. It's got a translucent, same that same glow-in-the-dark plastic that makes up most of his body. Also, he has in his horns, and it looks like he doesn't have quite the same, but a, maybe a lighter, translucent version of it for the areas that cover over his eyes. Uh, you can go ahead and put it on. It's just a simply uh, just a, a, a clamping. There we go. And it sits on very easy. It does not fall off. It doesn't. Uh, it won't come out or anything like that. So it's very much in place. With the helmet on, I think is how I'm going to be displaying the figure. Because truthfully, having him so much in this glow in the dark plastic. While I can accept the arms, the legs, and even like the little t area that's peeking through on his torso, uh, it seems so much cooler having him with the helmet on rather than having the unhelmeted face showing. Let's just take that off for a second. All right, so let's have a look at the figure. Now, this figure is awesome. I know I mentioned that already. We'll probably, I'll probably say awesome a couple more times here, but the, the body, the face, I kept wanting to say face, the face, and more importantly, the body is just... It's interesting, it's unique, and it's not something that we see a lot in the way of Predators. Predators have a more consistent armor. It varies, of course, from time to time, but you don't get a lot of real extremes uh, until you start looking at the Kenners. And like the Kenner re-releases from NECA, I think is really when they showcase some of their best uh, works when it comes to their Predator figures. Now this Predator is no exception. Let's kind of look at the less interesting aspect of the figure, and that is his face. His face isn't less interesting, but keeping in mind the fact that he has glow-in-the-dark plastic, he's relying so much on the brown wash to bring some details out on an otherwise very undetailed figure. The sculpt is there, absolutely, but because it's using all that glow-in-the-dark plastic, you don't get to see and appreciate it as much as if it was fully painted. But I get, by all means, I do get where NECA was going, and this is more a sell as it being a glow-in-the-dark figure, so I get why they would want to have the face more so like that. The dreads are also in that same glow-in-the-dark plastic. You can see predominantly making up most of the body is that glow-in-the-dark plastic as well. But it's the armor for me that sells this figure. The armor is, it's kind of a cross between, it kind of is a cross between like those old stone, like those statues, uh, like Tibetan statues that you see in sometimes uh, like pyramids, like not pyramids, but like old temples and stuff like that. It kind of reminds me a little bit of steampunk. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a samurai. It's just a combination of different uh, different designs that I really think sells this figure for me. I love the little spiked plates that run down the sides of his legs. The skull uh, shin guards are a nice addition as well. I'm not sure cast from a human skull, but skulls nonetheless. And let's not, of course, forget the big noticeable feature to this guy. 
is the xenomorph skull or xenomorph face that's been sculpted into his armor. Again, they're not probably going to be real skulls, but that he's hammered out or, or fashioned his armor with some of his trophy kills. And uh, again, that xenomorph sculpted into the torso plate really looks awesome on this figure. Some of the other little small things I like is that he's got these little blades. It's small details, but I love these little blades also on his gauntlets. As I would imagine, if he's unarmed, he's basically slashing with his forearm and cutting into his, uh, his target. The combination of the lighter golds, uh, more the copper gold color, and this dark rich brown copper, again, really brings everything together on this figure. I guess consistently, he's only really like two or three different versions of the same similar color, the copper, uh, the brown, the gold color. It really does come together very nicely. And then the icing on the cake for me is incorporating the helmet, which again very slides very easily over top of his head. When it comes to his posability, let's run through this together. Uh, the Stalker Predator has a ball joint in the head, ball hinged joint shoulders, you can rotate the arms all the way around, of course, being mindful of his backpack section here. And being, of course, mindful not to knock stuff off of his leg either. Uh, he has to have a swivel on the top portion of his bicep. Of course, the plate on his shoulder is not a hindrance to that. Double hinged elbows. He has a rotation and hinge. Essentially, it's just a ball joint that's attaching his wrist to the socket there. He has a... Uh, I think an upper torso crunch, although it's buried by the plate that's covering over him. But a nice ball joint going on there as well. Forward and back motion via a hinge joint that's on his upper thighs. A swivel also in the thigh portion. Double hinged knee. And finally, a ball joint in the feet. Uh, some areas that I think could have afforded a little bit of extra paint, even though the figure consistently is just head to toe awesome. But I feel like his feet, maybe a little bit of paint could have been added to his feet because I don't know, it looks like he's got a strapping there as well that could have easily afforded some of this brown and copper color covering over there as well. So it wasn't just all, you know, glow in the dark everywhere. Now, speaking of glow in the dark, obviously I could not do this figure justice if we did not have a look at the glow in the dark. So for that, I'm going to take the helmet off and let's see if we can get this guy to glow in the dark. Cutting off the lights, you can see a vibrant glow in the dark, even with the eyes piercing through around those brown crevices. I can see now why they've added a darker brown around the area portions of his eyes so that the glow in the dark would really shine through. I've only held him up to the light for a few minutes, so of course the results will vary. The brighter you, or the longer you have him in front of the lamp, of course the brighter he's going to be, but the glow in the dark aspect of least to him is very successful. The NECA Toys Kenner inspired Stalker Predator I think is one of my new all-time favorite Predator designs. You know again like with the Predators and NECA doing the Predator line, let's get the mask back on him here. Um, when it comes to like the more traditional movie Predators a lot of their armors will stay pretty consistent with one another. Now, don't get me wrong, it does vary. You know, some of the plates, shoulder plates may not be on one that might be on the other, but consistently, like, the, the armor stays pretty straightforward to one another. However, then, when you start looking at the Kenner stuff, I think this, this is where NECA is awesome. And I know I've said awesome a couple of times in this review, but this is where this figure is so cool. This is, uh, I don't... Again, I don't pick up many of the Predators, not recently at least, but when the Kenner stuff comes out, or the NECA Kenner themed stuff comes out, I usually snag those right away because I know every time I pick these guys up, I'm in for a treat. And Stalker Predator is exactly that. It is a treat, a feast for the eyes, and something that stands out amongst the crowd of other Predators that we've gotten. Definitely do yourself a favor if you can, pick this guy up. Today's Toy Spot, we're looking at the NECA Toys. This was the NECA Toys Predator Kenner themed line. And this was the Glow in the Dark Stalker Predator. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.